Hi, I'm Melanie Benayat. I'm a certified holistic health coach and the author of Stretch Your Brave, Hack Your Story, Break Through Chronic Disease with Storytelling. The Prescott Daily Courier asked if I would do a reading from my book to go along with their article that's going to be in, I think, this Sunday's paper. So I said, sure, I'll do a, a reading. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from my own personal story that's in the book, but there are 15 other case studies that I write about, not just my own story. Uh, I'm going to read just an excerpt from my story because my story is so long, and uh, maybe that'll intrigue you to show up for my upcoming event on September 25th where we can get the rest of the story done. Anyway, let me just... Um, I'll start in the middle of my story. My story is not unlike a lot of Americans. I simply didn't know or understand how the way I was living my life would unfold into this infiltration of chronic disease a decade or two later. I wasn't aware of just how impactful and interconnected everything was. It took hitting rock bottom and losing everything of value in my life before I finally stopped pushing through life in fast forward with nonsensical, emotional, headstrong, self-willed determination and ignorant bullheadedness. There, I said it. And it didn't kill me. And I didn't die of shame. Sometimes God has a poignant way of getting our attention when things are not working in our lives even if it seems cruel at the moment. Everything in my life came to a screeching halt. In the blink of an eye, it all blew up like a nuclear blast, destroying everything, everything. After an ugly domestic argument, I was charged with assault, which literally got me kicked out of my own home. The weapon of mass destruction, guacamole. I'm serious. Yep, homeless due to flying guac. I was left without access to bank accounts, credit cards, or cash. And it got much worse from there. It may sound too ridiculous to be true, but it happened. I finally got assistance to get set up in an apartment, but all I could do was curl up in fetal position on my sofa for the first two weeks. It's as if I was paralyzed. I had no appetite for food or friends or anything. I had a VHS movie in the VCR player that I just kept replaying over and over. I didn't have it in me to get up and put in a different movie. There was a song in the movie that ended up becoming a post-traumatic stress disorder trigger for me. For many years after, every time I heard that song, my heart Mm, would instantly start pounding in my chest a million miles per hour. It physically hurt. It didn't matter where I was or what I was doing. Sleeping, driving, or at a social event, whenever I heard that song, it would send my body into a state of panic. During the criminal case, by court order, I was evaluated by a male psychiatrist who then requested the court have me evaluated by a female clinical psychologist. After that evaluation, she requested that I be evaluated one more time by the therapist that led the domestic violence classes for assault offenders. Three psych evaluations in two weeks. I felt humiliated, like the worst criminal on the face of the earth and I just wanted to disappear into oblivion. As it turned out, each of the therapists reported to the court that they believed I was showing signs of mental, sexual, emotional, and financial abuse. I was told that unfortunately their reports would not hold up in court because that kind of abuse is too hard to prove. I was too far gone mentally and emotionally at that time with no financial resources to fight for my rights in court. I felt like the walking dead. I felt broken and empty. Though I wanted to move on with my life, when all was said and done, I was not very confident that I would actually be able to change my life. 
I simply could not imagine a different life for myself. I was more comfortable with the pains and struggles that I was familiar with than those of heading into unknown territory. I didn't know who I could trust with anything, including myself. My behavior and attitude had become so guarded, defensive, and offensive in an effort to protect what was left of my spirit that I could not feel anything but fear, anger, and loneliness in my heart. I didn't feel like I was living at all. I tried dating a few men, but that didn't work out well. I had a lot of healing to do before I would ever be ready for another serious relationship, if ever again. I recall hearing one man say, Damn, Melanie, you spend more energy in defensive mode than anyone I've ever known. It's like you constantly have your fists up and ready to knock someone out. Don't you see that you're just pushing everyone away? You need to let go. Aren't you tired of the fight? It was clearly time to learn how to stop letting all the controlling crazy makers in my life act as my board of directors. With the help of a very good art therapist and a small but loving support system of friends, I decided to close my eyes, spread my wings, and leap into the unknown, figuring, what do I have to lose? I've already lost everything. Mind you, my relationship with God at this point was wavering. Just the mention of the word God and the word spiritual evoked an uneasiness in my nervous system. I was sure I wouldn't be ready to explore that part of my story anytime soon. I packed up what was left of my life and left the country with two bright fuchsia suitcases in hand. And I think I'll just stop right there and uh, invite you all to come to my art show and book signing this coming Friday, September 25th. Uh, I'm going to be part of the Fourth Friday Art Walk. It's from 5 to 8, but I'm going to uh, ask that people show up at 4.30 if you want to be part of the storytelling that I'm going to start around 5 o'clock. I will be exhibiting at the Granite Mountain Brewing and Tap Room on Cortez Street in downtown Prescott. So hopefully I see you there. See you then. Bye.